Hello guys, so I'm going to start this video right here and guess what? Your favorite teacher is in today's PPT. I do this quite a lot guys and what I'm asking the kids to do here is to make a sentence with key words and expressions that they would have learned in the previous lesson, right? So you see the face of teacher and automatically because you learned it last week, the answer will be this is my teacher, right? And we go here, which is the reward. Keep or give the mystery box. If they keep it, they obviously get whatever is in the mystery box. And if they give it away, guess what? They give away whatever is inside. And let us reveal what's inside this mystery box. Wow, a whopping 2,000 points. And this is it. So all the kids do a point system. I put the points on the board. And whichever team has the most points actually wins the game. And that is how we do our TPTs. Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I decided to do this part of the video at my place because it's not this schooling period yet and my co-teacher comes in and out of the classroom quite a lot and I would hate for her to walk in on me shooting videos. It just looks wrong. I, I don't want to have to explain what it is that I'm doing because if she found out that I had a channel, she'd be asking me to show the kids what it is that I put on my channel. And I honestly don't want kids following me on socials and stuff. So nah. To all my new followers, guys, welcome to the amazing family. My name is Queen B. You can call me Beyonce, Butterful, Butterlicious Bottles, or you can simply just call me B. I am the first lady of this channel. Thank you so much for making a very important decision of subscribing. So anyway, guys, today we're going to talk about ESL. What is ESL? What is a conversational English teacher? We're then going to talk about lesson planning. I'm going to show you some of the lessons that I actually planned for my kids. I'm going to show you my open class that I actually did with my co-teacher last year. And yes, I do have permission to actually insert a clip in this video. And lastly, we're going to talk about co-teachers. Why I think co-teachers can actually make or break your experience on this program. So firstly, let's start with ESL. What is ESL? ESL stands for English as a Second Language. We are actually referred to as NETS, which are Native English Teachers. We're actually conversational teachers and our job here is to help these kids speak the English language. I can tell you now, guys, the type of teaching that I do in a public school and the type of teaching that Hogwan teachers do is very different. They actually do assessments. They do reports, which is something we don't actually do well at least in my case i don't do any of that i will never write a report card or fill out an assessment form for a child so i can never actually even track my kids progress which is actually quite sad you know but i suppose uh homeroom teachers are in charge of all of that but in english i can never actually tell if my kids are doing well or not except if i'm in classes with them and i test them you know just to see if they remember the work that i've taught them or if they even know how to respond to the question how are you because a lot of them still don't know how to respond to it till this day you know so i don't do any serious english teaching I don't dive into the actual English language. There is no way in any of my lessons that I'm going to ask my kids to dissect a poem. I'm not going to ask them about similes, oxymorons, jargons, and all of that stuff. That's why the instruction on that PPT is make a sentence, three words. So our sentences are actually not supposed to be too long. They're not supposed to be complicated. I even use very basic English. Instead of saying translate this into English, I actually just say, say it in English. Or instead of saying, choose the correct answer. All I have to say is choose the right answer or choose the wrong answer. You know, read this, read that. So the work that we teach them has to be pretty, pretty basic. And in my classes, guys, I am actually a PPT teacher. I do a lot of PPT games. I actually call myself the PPT monster because I even know the different variations of these PPT games, guys. My job at my school is mainly to do speaking PPTs and I do writing PPTs. And let me tell you something with these PPTs. Do you actually know that? You can actually play one PPT game across all of your grades. Yes, you can. I've once done that because my teacher liked this one particular game and she was like, 
actually i think you should make the same ppt for this grade that grade and the other grade as well and the whole week i was busy playing bad luck billy for grade three four five and six i love bad luck billy just by the way guys it's a very fun game but repetition sometimes just bores me so i got bored quite a lot so i don't do that anymore right now i actually just switch my games up i love to play different ppt games just as long as if they speak to the instruction that my teacher has given me speaking and writing only so every floor at school has got a teacher's room like a staff room okay so this is where we all hang out if we want to hang out with each other make photocopies this is where i get my coffee guys there are always snacks in inside the teacher's offices <laughs> so i'm gonna grab some snacks i'm gonna make my coffee and let's go and play so today i decided to bring my randellas and yes i gave them to my kids uh, i'm doing a lesson in south africa so i had to show them south african money this is my teacher's basket where i stuff all of my snacks from home guys you must try these snacks apparently they are not fried mm -hmm, so they say this is basically my English office where I get time to prep and I sit in here by myself. I'm busy working on a lesson and this over here is a textbook activity. I will show you how our textbooks work. I'm busy with another PPT. So my kids would see my face and the South African flag and they would already know that the answer is B teacher is from South Africa. <laughs> this over here is my monitor, right? This is my main computer screen. So what I do is I'll put the PPT on here and then it will show on here. It will then obviously appear here on TV for the students. Textbooks. I actually used to make use of textbooks in the last semester, but I no longer make use of textbooks now because my PPT games have become a bit longer and my co-teachers actually want me to do more of PPT work than textbooks. But in a textbook, guys, I would do the look and listen part or the look and say part. I'm going to show you guys. So um, this is my textbook. Oh, no. I'm going to lesson number two. Do you know anything about Hanok? I am doing the look and say part. And this is the video. I hope I'm not going to get into trouble for showing you guys this. But this is what the kids would do. So I would play this clip twice and then I would ask them questions. I come here to check. Uh, the questions are in Korean. However, you do have a textbook as a guide to tell you what the questions are. And the first question asks you which country uh, has traditional music called mariachi. And then write the answer is Mexico. And then you're like, yay, it's Mexico. Correct. And number two says, what did Minjun say to Jite when he could not hear Jite? And then they'll be like, oh, no, he said, what did you say? And then it's, what did you say? Well done, guys. That's great. Now, let's go back. I'm going to play the video. And then you guys must repeat. The music is great. Then the students would repeat. The music is great. This is what the textbooks would then look like. They are thick. Guys, they are thick. But let me show you something. They are really, really, really helpful as well. So this would be an example of a look and listen activity. What the kids do is they listen. It tells you what to do. Let's watch the video clip and listen to the dialogue. And then you ask them questions. What are they playing? And then who likes basketball? It's Emily. And that's about it. So it shows you like the warm up, the development side. Um, it shows you the wrap up as well. There are also games. There are tons and tons of games and stuff that you can get from these books. They can even sing, but we don't do a lot of this stuff, to be honest with you. I do a lot of PPT games, but that's about it. So every grade has got a textbook. It is this thick. And yeah, this is what lesson planning is about, guys. After doing the textbook section, there's usually a textbook activity that I would follow up with, and then we had to play the game. So whether you're doing a textbook, or you're doing a paper activity by the end of those 40 minutes guys there has to be some sort of game that you play with these kids like 
something fun has got to come out of it and i think here english is like an no session remember how chilled life orientation was you know that's the lesson where you would come in you'd interact with your teacher about this about that it was not as serious it's like pe you know kids go and have fun and i feel like english is the same here you know they come in and they know we're playing a game today like which game are we playing today i mean they even know the games to a point where they're like oh teacher is there change points or is they losing all points and they expect it when they see you it's this excitement that she's gonna come in she's gonna play games with us and as much as i love these games I sometimes feel like they take away from the actual English language. The kids don't then learn the work to remember it. They learn it just to get the points. And that's not the whole point. That's just how things are here anyway. So I'm going to show you some of the lessons that I teach my kids. And I'm actually going to show you a video of myself in class doing one of the lessons. So let me take you through my day. The kids walk in. They start screaming, be teacher, be teacher. And guys, they actually do. I kid you not. Hello. They get so excited to see me and I get so excited to see them too. So we always have like a five minute session where we just talk to the kids, you know, find out how the day was, you know ask them how are you today you know you went swimming at 7 a.m oh my goodness are you tired did you have breakfast what did you do this weekend so we always start our classes with conversations first you know just to warm the kids up get them excited for the lesson and then the teacher comes in with the game and the game issue takes about 30 minutes so in a 40 minute lesson 10 minutes is spent with asking kids how they're doing my co-teacher explaining something else that she needs to explain to them in korean and then we obviously move over to my section where i do the game and while i do the game my teachers will then translate if there's any translating to be done or they will assist the kids but it means in those 30 minutes where i'm doing my activity i actually lead that lesson all the way till the end where the kids have to leave so those are my classes nothing changes they all run like that from third all the way up to sixth grade this is one of my favorite ppt games it is called fortnite last one standing i'm teaching this to my sixth graders with my co-teacher i do the game and my co-teacher basically assists with translating to the students if they win they continue standing So the last student obviously got the candy. They are the winner. This is my co-teacher doing a review. We always do this after I have done the game. And this is basically class, guys. So let me say this. If you are a qualified teacher back at home and you come into this ESL industry, you may actually struggle because we don't do any of the teaching that you do at home. Like I've said to you, assessments and all of that stuff. I know there are other people who are asked to help set exams or tests and all of that. I personally don't do that. I've actually been asked to mark tests on two occasions. I was actually very shocked to discover that the tests are actually in Korean. The tests are in Korean. Yes, the kids have to answer in English, but 80% of those exams are in Korean. And then you've got small gaps left for the kids to answer a word two or three in english apart from that guys i don't do any marking or any assessments like i just told you i do ppt activities so if you are used to teaching you may struggle because when you come into this job guys firstly you're not in charge you are an assistant teacher yes you may lead the lesson but that does not mean that you are in charge because you actually get told please prepare an activity for this lesson or that lesson and this is the type of activity i need you to prepare so you are an assistant 
there are certain things that you can teach these kids. So we have a curriculum that we have to follow. So you can't go outside of the curriculum and teach kids whatever it is that you want to teach them. Unless, of course, there's a special request from your teacher to say, B teacher, can you please teach the kids about different cultures? Teach the kids about different food in South Africa, which is what I do quite a lot in my classes. My co-teacher actually loves that and I love it too. Thirdly, guys, you cannot just discipline these kids in any manner that you want to discipline them in. If you were used to screaming and shouting at your kids, kick them out of classes and stuff, not here. We don't do any of that. Well, at least in my school, I know y'all, we don't do any of that. If a child is disruptive, yes, you shout. And our shouting is, hey, Yedra, Juyung he hey, like, keep quiet. Please sit down. But there is none of this yelling where the next class is going to hear you screaming, like, back at home. Like, I, our teachers were, like, loud. You know, we used to get kicked out, sit outside the class, or better yet, go to the office. So sometimes what we do is we send the kids to the head teacher or we send them to the back of the classroom where we ask them to stand. Sometimes you have special needs teachers who come in with the special needs kids in classes. So we don't do a lot of discipline things. I actually don't have a lot of problem kids in my classes. You guys saw my after school class that is as wild as my kids get. But let me tell you something. They don't actually get that wild when I teach with my co-teachers, especially my one co-teacher she's not about it like once you become a bit too loud or you're too disruptive she actually just stops the game immediately like okay teacher it's either we minus points or we stop playing the game and you take out your textbooks so they even know that okay we are not gonna try this one but with me they sometimes do try their luck but this semester i actually don't have any issues with my kids whatsoever everything just runs smoothly my kids are just so energetic they're always full of energy even at 2 30 where i am drained my kids come in those classrooms and they're always loud like p teacher and i'm always like p teacher's got a headache today but we're gonna play we're gonna have fun you know sometimes you just don't want to work you're tired or you're sick you've got a headache but you always just have to show up and that is definitely one thing that i actually do with my kids regardless of how tired i am or how sick i am i always show up i'm always the same p teacher they will see every single day anyway so let's move to open classes what is an open class when i arrived at school last year i was told that i'd have to do an open class and our open classes are actually quite fun so the parents come into school and they watch us teach and i was really nervous doing that open class but i think i actually did quite well i will show you guys a clip of it and like i did say i did get permission so i'm going to show you a little bit of my open class <laughs> This was actually my open class from last year with my co-teacher. These are our third graders, guys. This open class was so fun. I actually nailed it. I really enjoyed this. What color is the teacher wearing? Blue. Brown. 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 Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. I actually have another open class coming however it is my co-teacher's open class but i decided to do it with her because we have a new principal and he has not seen b teacher in action this open class is not going to have any parents this is a different open class it's going to have staff coming to watch us the vice principal and the principal and it's usually an open class that is done when you're a new teacher or you are renewing if you're on epic and you are renewing you most certainly going to be asked to do an open class and i guess that forms part of your evaluation so the school and the office of education can see if you actually can renew or not so guys renewal is not automatic you actually have to do an open class you have an assessment they assess you and then they will tell you the school wants to keep you longer or not so it's not just you saying yes i'm renewing or i'm moving to different places and let me tell you something as well about renewals and stuff there's actually a certain score that you're supposed to get for you to pass and to say you are renewing or you are moving to another city you've scored below 80 it means that you cannot renew and if you cannot renew it means you cannot transfer to another school so do keep that in mind on this job you do get evaluated at the end of your contract let's talk about co-teachers 
So I actually strongly believe that co-teachers can either make or break your EPIC experience. And I say this because guys, we work with co-teachers all the time. Well, I do, and I work with two co-teachers. There are other people who work with five co-teachers and I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I don't know how they do it but my co-teachers are actually super awesome because firstly we respect each other i'm actually older than one of my co-teachers but we respect each other guys my co-teachers know the type of person that i am i know the type of people they are they know my style of teaching i know their style of teaching and the one important thing they know about b teacher is that b teacher does not do korean surprises i've had so many korean surprises guys to a point where i actually sat one of my co-teachers down who's the teacher i've worked with the longest and i've had to say to her listen it is not going to work you have seen the high quality work that i produce my work is really great guys when you see my ppts you actually understand that it is a b teacher ppt there is a certain standard that my ppts are and for me to get to that standard i require a bit more time to work on my ppts so i told them i said listen i need a bit more time to produce that high quality work you know so i'm gonna need you to give me lessons a week in advance so i actually sit on my co-teachers backs now and i'm like what is next week's lessons i mean to a point where we actually have a google docs document where they fill it in a week in advance to say this is the lesson that's the lesson so i don't even have to speak to my co-teachers about lessons i log into the google docs and the information is there if the information is not there then i give them a ring to say listen i need an activity for next week when i get free time during the week guys i don't sit on my phone and chat so any free hour i have any free lesson i have i use that to plan in advance because i'm actually trying to wrap up the semester's work so i can focus on english camp which is coming up right now in july and i don't even know what on earth we're going to be doing for camp i'm already stressing out i haven't had time to think about it so that's why i actually like to prepare in advance yesterday which was a Sunday, my co-teacher actually sent me a message to say the schedule has changed for Wednesday. It means I now have to do my fifth grade class on Wednesday instead of Friday. So had I not prepared in advance, it means tomorrow going back to work, I'd have to now start planning what it is I'm going to do for fifth grade. And I don't like to work under pressure. I don't do that kind of stuff. So if you give me work in advance, I'm able to have plan B or C you know, should a certain activity not work. If I'm not happy with something or the tasks I've been given are just a bit too much or I don't understand an instruction that my co-teacher gave me, I can actually sit down with my co-teacher and say, hey, listen, I don't understand ABC or I feel like I'm taking on a bit too much. Um, is it possible for us to maybe share duties? Is it possible for you to help me with this activity? I'll help you with that activity. So I'm very open with my co-teachers. And guys, that's exactly how you should be as well. You are adults it is okay to speak to your co-teachers and in a case where you have co-teachers who are just impossible to work with because some co-teachers actually are there are co-teachers who are actually not nice at all i'm sorry to say but i know a lot of people who have issues with their co-teachers and guys can i tell you something sit down with your co-teachers and let them know what you're not happy with if your co-teacher does not assist you in any way you can speak to the english head you can speak to the vice principal you can speak to the principal and if nobody at school hears you out and it's something major that you feel like needs to be addressed you definitely need to speak to your offices of education when you arrive at your schools guys epic is no longer in charge of you you are now the responsibility of your office of education. So any issues you have with your school, you take that up with your school or your offices of education. And if you are feeling miserable at work and that reason is caused by your co-teachers or your colleagues, guys, deal with it. Do not sit and be uncomfortable and unhappy at work. One year is a very long time, guys. You do not want to be in that situation. If you're not happy, speak to your co-teachers, address them. And if you are scared to do that, speak to maybe your other co-teachers if you have more than one co-teacher. Maybe you have other travel schools. You can speak to somebody you trust, you know. Have somebody hear you out to see how you can resolve your problems. You want to come to work. You want to be excited. You want to be happy for your kids. And if you're working in an environment that is not positive, that can really take a toll on you. You will actually start to hate your epic experience. 
and I think that's about it on that matter. There is something else I actually just want to add in. I was asked a very important question and somebody asked me, was I not afraid to move abroad in my 30s? And the answer is no. This is the second time I'm actually doing something of the sort. The very first time I moved abroad, I was 21 years old. I lived in the United States of America for three months. I was actually doing a work and travel program with my friend and I was scared. However, to be honest with you, I was actually not too scared because I was doing the program with somebody else, right? And here with Epic, I'm actually doing this program by myself. Yes, I have met a lot of people on this journey, but at the end of the day, I am actually still alone. I'm on this experience alone. And it has been an amazing time here in South Korea. I love South Korea. Let me actually tell you guys something. A friend of mine actually said to me, if you want to do something, whether it's starting a business, getting into a new relationship, starting a new job, moving somewhere, never make people part of your decision making. And it's not to say that you should not get advice from people or whatnot, but you know, there are times where we actually involve people too much in our decision making to a point where once you've made the decision, you actually realize, but now I've made a decision based on other people's opinions. So that's what she was basically saying to me, make a decision. And once you've made that decision, it is then that you can involve other people. You can go home now, tell friends and family, oh, I want to move to South Korea. And I kid you not, guys, somebody would be like, oh, South Korea, you want to be close to North Korea. What happens when they bomb you guys? And automatically your decision is made from that. You're already scared. Like, oh my God, this person is so right. What if they bomb us? You know, we make decisions based on other people's opinions. And in the end, guys, you get nothing done. So don't make people part of your decision making. Decide on something and do it, guys. Another thing is all in coming to age. Do not make decisions based on age only. Whether you move or whether you stay at home, you're still going to get older. So decide. Do you want to get older in South Africa or do you want to get older in another country? <laughs> and I know a lot of people ask because they want to start having families. And I mean, at age 30, people are settling down and stuff. But I have a question for you guys. Why do you guys want to limit yourselves to South Africans only? What if your Prince Charming is Alejandro or it's Park Kim or Kwasi from wherever? Like, why do you want to limit yourselves to only finding partners in South Africa? There are so many other places in the world that could even cater to your needs. Guys, you don't even know if you're supposed to be sailing down in South Africa or not. You guys are actually like, oh my word, what if I move? I'm not going to get this. I'm not going to get that. You don't even know. What if you're supposed to be a global girl or a global boy? You don't even know this. So stop limiting yourselves, you know. You could meet your partner elsewhere in the world. You could actually get your dream job elsewhere in the world outside of South Africa. And if you're scared but you want to go on this journey, do it scared. I mean, what is the worst that could happen? The only thing that could happen is that you could come to South Korea, you could hate it. And when that happens, guys, guess what? You are not a tree. You can actually pack your bags and head right back home. Or you can go on another adventure and go to another country. So stop limiting yourselves, guys. The world is so big. There are so many countries in the world. Why would you want to limit yourself to one country when the opportunities are coming your way? So, I hope we've discussed this question. I'm not afraid to move abroad in my 30s, guys. If I were 50 years old, I would have still moved abroad. I will never stop living or doing things because of age. I would have actually been very upset with myself had I not made this move. I would have honestly felt like I'm not living my life to the fullest. And living my life to the fullest, guys, can be doing anything. I'm just open to a lot of things. You know, if I feel like from here, I want to go to a next place, honeys, I'm going to the next place. If I feel like after here, I'm going home, I'm going to go home. You know, I'm going to do whatever it is that makes me happy. I'm going to do whatever it is that my gut feeling tells me to do. So do not limit yourselves because of age. You can always have a second chance. You can always have a third 
chance. There are people who only got their dream jobs at age 50. Who are you to limit yourself and even with that being said obviously guys there is a limit here i think it is 55 years old or 60 years old i could be mistaken but you have so many opportunities and even over that 60 guys it does not limit you from doing other things that you want to do in your life and these things may not involve teaching they could be getting into other industries they could be getting into business you know starting something of your own just be grateful for the fact that you're actually being exposed to these opportunities. Be grateful for the things you've already received and the things that you are to receive. But anyway, until next time, guys, we are heading to a thousand subscribers. I think I'm gonna stop counting now. We'll go to 800, we'll go to 900. Let's talk when we are at a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. As usual, guys, the comment section is your bestie. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting me. Until next time, sarangye!